Howdy friendos, my name is Stuart, and welcome to the Batman video. In honor of Matt Reeves' The Batman movie, we'll be covering our third DC Comics property, Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight Trilogy. For any and all Bat fans who've come onto this video, don't forget to punch that like button, ding dong dat bat bell, and definitely bat scribe. <laughs> I'm just guaranteed that no one's gonna do that. And if you'd like more bat content on this bat channel, Check out our animated Harley and 2019 Joker videos. My assistant writer Cinema has expressed interest in doing a few other DC properties before, and if this video does well, maybe we could do a few more movies or even something from the animated series. Perhaps if we meet a certain milestone, we'll talk about another really big and popular character. It could be a real shock to the system. <laughs> Cinema, stop writing bad jokes. <laughs> back, back on track. Bruce Wayne was the son of Thomas and Martha Wayne, the billionaire socialites who are gunned down by a mugger. Growing up bitter, Bruce goes to find and kill the man before Gotham's criminal underground takes care of that. Angry and confused, Bruce begins wandering aimlessly in an attempt to better understand crime. He's eventually arrested and jailed when we pick him up. Because we're starting off with Bruce Wayne the Wanderer though, and not Batman the Batman, we'll be starting him at Chaotic Neutral. Unlike Burton's gothic approach or Schumacher's send-off to the 60s camp, Nolan brought things down to a gritty, realistic level. This means several characters, including well-established characterizations, have different histories and interpretations. Shortly after this, he comes across a monastery in the mountains called the League of Shadows, and while he's at the League, he learns theatrics, the art of distraction, and basically becomes a glorified ninja. Like. I'm pretty sure the term ninja was actually thrown around a few times completely unironically in this movie. It's still really cool, but a little silly. For his final test of becoming a Batman ninja, no, not that one, he was told that he would need to kill a criminal and then it would be his job as a ninja to finish destroying Gotham. Buddy, that's a hard sell no matter who you are. Anyway, naturally, Bruce refuses to destroy a town that he grew up in and turns on the ninjas. Shortly after this, he heads back to Gotham and takes the theatrics advice quite literally and decides dressing up as a creature of the night will be the best way to fight crime as a vigilante known as the Batman. So with all of that out of the way, let's go. <laughs> Batman, don't look at the sun, it'll hurt your eyes. Oh, I did it! <laughs> you got me again, <laughs> Bane! Oh, Bane! Reverse psychology, Bane! <laughs> My worst enemy! <laughs> Oh, yes, Batman. A directionalist jailed Bruce Wayne gets into a fight with several prisoners after he's attacked. He stops when the guards come and drag him away. Chaotic evil. I counted six, Mr. Wayne. Put into solitary confinement, Bruce is met by Qui-Gon Ducard, who offers him a path with Ra's al Ghul and the League of Shadows. While Bruce is skeptical, he eventually climbs his way up the mountain and learns to fight injustice. Chaotic good. I will teach you to confront it and to face the truth. Bruce begins training under the League and Ducard. He bonds with his teacher and masters martial arts, strategy, and theatrics. With enough time, he is able to pass Ducard's test. Lawful neutral. What he asks in return is the courage to do what is necessary. Ready to be fully inducted into the League, Bruce is given his final test to kill a farmer who turned murderer. If completed, Bruce will bring a faction of the League to cleanse Gotham City. To save both his home and the man in front of him, Bruce sets the building on fire, killing dozens of people. He saves Ducard, barely, taking his master to the village to heal. Chaotic good. Master Wayne, you've been gone a long time. Returning to Gotham and inspired by his time abroad, Bruce gets to work taking down crime in the city. He recruits the head of R&D, Lucius Fox, to arm him, initially lying poorly before dropping the act. He also finds, gathers, and provides information to Sergeant Jim Gordon about taking down Falcone, all under the guise of holding him at gunpoint. Chaotic neutral and chaotic good. I'm Batman. With everything set up, Bruce attacks Falcone's drug smuggling operation, leaving Carmine for the police. He provides any evidence he has to friend turn ADA Rachel Dawes after saving her from the mob. Neutral good. You start pretending to have fun. You might even have a little by accident. Following his first successful night at Alfred's suggestion, Bruce goes out on the town in a billionaire playboy persona. He buys anything, hangs out with supermodels, only faltering when Rachel sees him. Chaotic neutral. It's you, isn't it? Everybody's been talking about you. With Carmine behind bars, but a supply of drugs still missing, Bruce decides to have a nice, quiet, calm conversation with Gordner's partner, Flass. Classy. 
Investigating the missing drugs in the Narrows and confronting King Joffrey, Bruce finds the drugs and his first costume rogue, the Scarecrow. Drugged and lit on fire, Bruce is only barely able to escape and fight off the drugs. Neutral good? What's Scarecrow? Learning that Rachel is going to investigate Crane, Bruce leaves his birthday party to save her. He stops the thugs from dumping more neurotoxin in the river before gassing Crane for the identity of the last player of the movie. Chaotic good. Grabbing Gordon, Bruce works with him to escape with the drugged Rachel under the cover of bats. Bruce then drives through Gotham and police barricades, curing Rachel from Crane's poison at the cave. He then gives her two more cures for Gordon and mass production. In case the worst should happen, chaotic good. Is Raz al Ghul immortal? Coming to his party late, Bruce is confronted by the mastermind of the movie, Henry Ducard, the real Raz al Ghul. Bruce proceeds to act drunk and cause the partygoers to leave him and the League alone. Bruce refuses to stand by Raz's side and tries to negotiate with him. This goes poorly, chaotic good. What is the point of all those push ups if you can't even lift a bloody log? Rescued by Alfred, Bruce pulls himself up to save Gotham. Working with Gordon as the city tears itself apart, he confronts Roz after saving Rachel and Joffrey, but not before revealing himself to his love interest. During all of this, he gets Jim to take down the train as the ultimate failsafe. Neutral good. I won't kill you, but I don't have to save you. Um, action by inaction, Bruce. Not the best loophole to your no-kill rule. Technically, I, I want to label this chaotic evil, Technically, it can be chaotic neutral or neutral. Fuck it, chaotic neutral. With the Dave saved, Bruce finishes his big changes. Lucius is put in charge of Wayne Enterprise to help the company and Bruce's nightlife. He solidifies his work relationship with Gordon, promising to take care of some clown problem. And while slowly fixing up his torched home, he does try to secure his relationship with Rachel, which she wants but knows Bruce can't commit to yet. Neutral good. What's the difference between you and me? I'm not wearing hockey pants. For almost a year, Bruce has continued his campaign against crime. He stops criminals like Scarecrow and hockey pad wearing copycats. He is also prepping to take down the mob with Gordon and the new district attorney, Harvey Dent. Bruce is putting his hopes into Harvey, all the hopes of stepping away from Batman so that he can live. While the Joker is a problem, Bruce is hyper-focused on the mob, putting him on the back burner. Neutral good, twice. We need Lau back. If I get him to you. Can you get him to talk? After the mob learned about the sting and run, Bruce works with Dent and Gordon to get Lau, the mob accountant, back from China. Breaking then dozens of treaties and laws by sneaking into Hong Kong, nabbing Lau, Gotham gets itself a major win against the mob. Neutral good. Actually, chaotic good. You see, this is how crazy Batman's made Gotham. With the Gotham underground hit hard, Bruce begins planning Harvey's fundraiser, even after seeing Joker's snuff film with the ultimatum. Bruce continues to wrap up his tenure as Batman and be with Rachel. Bear in mind that Rachel is seeing Harvey and Bruce is aware of this. Bruce, my guy, no. <laughs> no, chaotic neutral, no. I like that. Then you're gonna love me. When Joker begins killing judges and commissioners, Bruce finds and hides Harvey before he suits up. He refuses to unmask himself, but takes down all of Joker's thugs while saving Rachel from a lethal fall. Neutral good. Some men just want to watch the world burn. Taking Joker seriously now, Bruce tries hunting and trying to figure out this anarchist. He gathers evidence, tracks leads, but it's too late for Joker's attempt. Ultimately, Jim Gordon seemingly dies and Harvey goes missing for the assassination attempt. Well, good. With Jim dead and running out of options, Bruce tries throwing a mobster off a building. Uh, no, chaotic evil. Don't care. No, that's not how that works. He's gonna kill Rachel. You're the symbol of hope. I can never be. With no options left, Bruce stops Harvey from playing Russian roulette with one of Joker's goons, which would undo everything they did for the first half of the movie. Bruce finally decides to reveal his identity the next morning, telling Rachel and confessing his feelings again. Too bad Harvey ruins that and claims he's Batman. Lawful good, then... Neutral for waiting. With Harvey now in Joker's sights, Bruce protects the DA's life. This includes sacrificing the tumbler and even choosing not to run over the Joker when given the chance. Luckily, Joker is captured by a very alive Jim. Model good. <sighs> okay, please hear me out and don't get mad. This is an iconic Nat 20 scene. No argument. 
Harvey is missing, and Bruce is the only one who can get the answer. Hitting and tossing Joker around for information would be lawful evil or neutral evil, depending on how you slice it. But, this is a big but, but the moment Joker reveals he's also captured Rachel and put the two in a death trap, changes everything. Bruce bars the door, making sure Gordon and the cops can't break in as he savagely beats the Joker, demanding to know where they are. I know it's controversial, but I'm going to give this chaotic evil. Don't worry, I'm going to tell you where they are. You'll have to choose. Bruce chooses to go after what he and the others believe to be Rachel, while the cops go after Dent. We don't know how far each of them are from the Gotham City to Police Department, but Bruce chooses without a moment's thought. Unfortunately, Joker tricked everyone, and Bruce gets to Harvey. Rachel dies, and Harvey receives massive burns. Chaotic good. I need to be honest and clear. I'm going to marry Harvey. With Harvey disfigured, Rachel dead, and Joker escaped, Bruce mourns, telling himself that Rachel would have waited for him, unaware of a Dear John letter that she had written prior to her death. Neutral. I don't want Mr. Reese spoiling everything, but why should When his employee, Coleman Reese, is targeted by the Joker, Bruce snaps out of his funk, keeping Gordon in the loop and saving the two out of costume while keeping up his playboy act. Reese and several others are saved, but Harvey is missing once again. Lawful good. With chaos consuming Gotham, people missing, and no sign of the Joker, Bruce reveals his latest invention, a device to turn every phone in Gotham into sonar to help find the Joker. Granted, this is a desperate play, and he recognizes this is a lot of power, but there were hints that he was working on this earlier in the movie. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and say chaotic good. And here we go. As Joker enacts his two-boat philosophy test, Bruce then finds and rescues all the hostages. He fights the henchmen and the Joker, all while the people on the boat decide what to do. Unlike the Michael Keaton Batman, Bruce saves the Joker and the people on the boat, allowing Joker to be captured at long last. Lawful good. I think you and I are destined to do this forever. <laughs> yeah, so long as DC Comics makes money. <laughs> Finding a crazed Harvey ready to kill Gordon's family, Bruce tries to convince Harvey to stop and offer himself up. He's shot, but is able to save James Jr. by tackling Harvey off the building. Neutral good. I killed those people. That's what I can be. With Harvey dead and his reputation ruined, Bruce offers himself up as a sacrificial lamb so that the criminals of Gotham stay behind bars. Yes, Bruce is trying to preserve the law and these people but this has a severe ramifications. All of this is based on a lie for several people to be locked up. No one cared who I was till I put on the mask. With Batman now a criminal and having lost his loved ones around him, Bruce retires, isolating himself for eight years as his company falls to ruin. In Bruce's mind, Gotham no longer needs Batman with a better equipped police force. Neutral twice for time. Bruce defends his home as an American should. Bitch trying to steal his stuff. Mm -mm, lawful neutral. What can I do for you, officer? Commissioner Gordon's been shot. Bruce is met by a new character, Officer Robin John Blake. <laughs> sure. And learns that John knows who Bruce is and that Gordon had a run-in with Bane. This finally inspires Bruce to step out into the world. He researches Bane, his failing company, new love interest Miranda Tate and Selena Kyle, and some fun new gadgets Mr. Fox has been working on with the reminder that his body is still broken. Neutral good. Sometimes the pit sends something back. Ignoring Alfred's warnings and the state of his body, Bruce becomes Batman again when the stock market is robbed by Bane. He runs from the police and rescues Selena from Bane. He loses track of her, but Gotham knows the Dark Knight has returned. Neutral good. Police weren't getting it done. Perhaps I might have. If you had made a sideshow yourself. Okay, boy. Here's another slightly controversial choice. Returning home, Bruce tries to continue Batmaning only for Alfred to put his foot down. Terrified about what Bane will do to him. Bruce insists that he wants to continue as Rachel is no longer involved in his life. Only then does Alfred reveal that Dear John letter. Hmm. If I had a nickel for every time a butler withheld vital information from their obsessed costume employer about a death of a loved one, I would have two nickels. <laughs> Which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it's happened twice. Anyways, Bruce, in retaliation, dismisses Alfred. Since he did this to kind of hurt him, I'm going to go with chaotic evil? You can argue chaotic neutral, though. And I won't argue with it. Those options expired at midnight last night. You're completely broke.
With Bain bankrupting Wayne Industries, Bruce goes into crisis control and lets Miranda know about a dangerous new energy source and plot device. This helps save his company temporarily, but Bruce is broke. He asks Selena for help finding Bain in exchange for a clean slate, chaotic neutral. We could leave tonight. In preparation for his battle with Bane, Bruce spends the night with Miranda, refusing to leave the city until he's finished. Also, since I assume this is the only chance he could have done this, Bruce alters his will so his home can be turned into an orphanage and his resources can be given to a successor. Lawful good? Wayne says you can get me the clean slate. That depends. Bruce and Selina team up to find Bane. Unfortunately, this turns out to be a trap for the Dark Knight. Bane savagely beats him emotionally, mentally, and physically. Broken and in the pit, Bruce is forced to witness Gotham become a no-man's land under Bane's rule. One pain-induced hallucination of Ra's al Ghul later, Bruce heals up and attempts to climb out of the pit. Eventually, after enough time has passed and he's been motivated, he succeeds. Awful good. Um, but he does leave a rope out of the prison for anyone to escape. Eh, neutral good. I thought they killed you. Not yet. Returning to Gotham, Bruce becomes a busy boy recruiting allies. He gets in touch with Selina, giving her the clean slate, rescues Lucius, John, Gordon, and the cops. He prepares for his final battle with Bane, but tells John to get as many civilians out of Gotham should he fail. Lawful good. The fight is on as Bruce battles everyone he can, beelining for Bane. He's able to damage the mask and demands to know where the location of the trigger. Only gasp, he stabbed in the back. Neutral good. But we totally had sex. Yes, I, I know. No, like, hardcore. Three times. Saved by Selena, she and Bruce rush to stop Talia and the bomb from going off. He's able to run Talia off the road, killing her but saving Jim. With no way to disarm the bomb, Bruce knows what he must do. He flies as far as possible outside of Gotham's borders and into the sea, making sure that no one is caught in the blast radius and seemingly sacrificing himself. Lawful good. No one's ever gonna know who saved an entire city. Right now. But, and this is another big but, Bruce allows everyone to think both Bruce Wayne and Batman died, aside for Selina Kyle. He retires from crime fighting and goes to live abroad and tell no one he made it or that he didn't die in the explosion. Chaotic neutral? This characterization of Bruce is pretty interesting to examine when compared to the other cinematic counterparts. Ben Affleck, Michael Keaton, and even Adam West all play this man obsessed with justice and never truly see an end to being Batman. Bruce Wayne effectively died in the crime alley and Batman remains where he will either die trying to help people or die alone and broken. This Batman is fascinating because he wants what's best for Gotham and believes in the good of the city, but he doesn't believe he'll be Batman forever. He's setting up plans constantly to make sure Gotham is taken care of by someone younger with the resources. We see it with Gordon and the Better Armed Police, Harvey and his campaign, and even Robin to be his eventual replacement when he's too broken to realistically continue. And by the time of this video's release, Matt Reeves' The Batman is gearing up to be a standalone much like Bale's was. And it looks pretty good. I'm, I'm kind of interested in what they're going to do. So what did you guys think? Should we cover other bat men should we look at the other live action bat guys at some point or maybe some animated ones don't forget to like comment subscribe to the bat things and thank you to the bat patrons and i'll see you guys next time